Hi, welcome back to the next episode of my webinar series on Modern Java by Example. Today we're going to be describing how to send complex data types involving recursive relationships between classes across processes using a combination of WebFlux and Project Reactor. We're also going to be talking about some other ways in which you can convert Project Reactor data types that are sent across a network, things like fluxes and monos, into more conventional modern Java data types, such as streams and completable futures. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here that we have my uh, live lessons repository. Here's where the source code resides. Let's go ahead and take a look. This will be in the folders directory, and it's in the web flux subfolder under the folders directory. We've looked at this example before, but we haven't examined it from this perspective. So let's take a different look. Now I'm pulling up my IDE. This is the main program. This particular program, just to recap, if you don't remember what we talked about a couple days ago, it uses the Spring Web Flux microservice framework in order to apply reactive streams, implemented with Project Reactor, of course, in a top to bottom and end to end reactive way. And what we do here is we basically make requests to get access to the contents of a complex directory hierarchy that's recursively structured and contains lots and lots of folders and subfolders and documents and so on. And then we process the results that come back sequentially, concurrently, and in parallel. And perhaps most importantly for the discussion today, we're going to show how these complex objects involving inheritance relationships can be sent magically back and forth between the microservice side and the client side using WebFlux and Project Reactor. And you actually don't have to do much of anything in order to make this all work. So to just kind of recap what the issue is here, uh, we're going to be sending and receiving durants or variations of durants. And a durant is essentially a complex composite object that has a durant superclass, which is what we're seeing here. And then we're going to have some subclasses. We're going to have one durant subclass called a document, which extends durant and then adds some methods that know how to treat the contents of a document in a sensible way. And then we also have something called a folder, which is also a subfolder, of course. And that's also a subclass of Durant. And this has some additional methods and fields that are able to handle recursive nested hierarchy. So this is an inheritance relationship. And let's just go ahead quickly and take a look at how this is created from the microservice side, which will then pass it back to the client side. So if we peek over here, we can see the folder controller which is the mechanism, of course, that WebFlux uses in order to be able to map the various get, post, delete, and so on requests that are essentially HTTP requests into code to process those requests in a RESTful manner. The folder controller is going to use the slash folders portion of a URI in order to identify this particular controller. And then the various methods we have, like search word or get documents or count entries, or create folder, those are then mapped further with other elements that are done with a get mapping, which is an annotation provided by, by Spring and WebFlux in order to be able to do this mapping from requests from a client down into the code that implements it in the microservice side. So the particular areas we're gonna focus on are gonna be create folder initially, and then we're also gonna come back and take a look at get documents. And they're both interesting in slightly different ways. You'll notice that the most interesting part about them is they both end up with project reactor data types like fluxes or monos of this recursively structured object, which is the durant, which could either be folders and or documents and some combination therein. So let's start with the create folder method. So create folder is going to end up taking the root dir into the file system on the microservice side and some other fields we don't care much about at the moment. And what it's going to go ahead and do, and it, it's going to go ahead and call a local factory method called folder test create folder. And if you take a look at folder test create folder, it's going to go ahead essentially and snarf in the contents of the recursive directory structure, and then it's going to return it back as a mono to this recursive data structure. Now, the create folder method here knows nothing whatsoever about being used in a network environment or a client server environment or a distributed environment. All it knows is how to create a complex durant object and then get a mono back to it as the return value. And in fact, that's really all you can see is done here in the create folder method. This is essentially the, the proxy implementation method 
on the microservice side. And once again, you'll see that there's nothing here that looks really out of the ordinary from normal single address space programming. We're returning a mono to a durant. But that's where things get really interesting. Let me also show you where this code is called so you can kind of see the big picture end to end. So if we come over here and folder tests, we'll see that there's a, uh, another method in here that is basically going to be used to do the uh, remote folder. Let's see if I can go ahead and find that. It's probably lurking. Oh, I know where it is. It's over in the, the proxies. So if you go to the folder test proxy class, you'll see in here we have a method called create remote folder. That's the one that's gonna do the, the magic here. That's, this is the client side of this client server remote method invocation uh, model. And what happens here is this will be called, of course, by the, the client application. And it comes in here and it goes ahead and uses this thing called a folder proxy, which we've set up here to basically be a web client builder. We give it the URL for where the server is. We tell it to make the buffer size really big. And then down here, when someone does a create remote folder call, we go ahead and make a get request, which will go to the create URI path name, which is defined up here to be slash folders slash works underscore create. And then that will come back. Uh, and then we go ahead and retrieve the response from the server. We send the request over, we get the response back, and then we convert that to a mono. This is where the magic has to happen because what we've gotten back at this point is a whole pile of JSON, which is the encoding of all the contents in the remote directory. And we want to be able to take that and then have the Webflux framework automatically convert that into the appropriate subclass of Durant, be it a folder, be it a document or whatever. In this case, of course, it's going to be a folder. Well, how do we do that? How does the receiver side know how to decode the JSON and create the right subclass of Durant. Well, it turns out if you go look at the Durant class, the magic happens here with this tag, this annotation tag that's being given. So JSON type info at JSON type info is an annotation tag that instructs Webflux to use the descriptions here in order to know how to encode this particular data structure, keeping in mind it's it's an inheritance based related relationship between folder and document, which are subclasses of the Durant superclass. And so there's a few little incantations you have to have here where you say use JSON type info dot e, dot ID dot class, include JSON type info dot as dot property, and then you define the property to be the at class property. And this is how you instruct JSON to automatically realize that Durant is a superclass, and therefore it has to be very careful when it decodes the incoming JSON in order to create the appropriate subclass instances corresponding to the elements. And the way that this all works under the hood, of course, is by having these setter getter methods that are defined. So if you take a look, for example, at folder, you'll see that folder has some fields defined, subfolders and documents. And then it also has some setter getter methods, get subfolders, set subfolders, and so on. And these methods are used, of course, to properly encode the information that's described here in, the, in a folder. A folder can also, of course, contain uh, recursively defined elements as well, because a subfolder may have other subfolders and other documents in it. And so it's all very recursive. And so the, the underlying mechanisms that are provided by, by Webflux, which uses Jackson under the hood, are able to do all this encoding and decoding for us automatically. And uh, if you don't know how to put the tags in here, then you won't get back something that understands the type relationships that are being used. Uh, I was very fortunate that uh, some colleagues, uh, my, my friend and good colleague, Jules White, knows a lot about encoding and decoding in Spring. So he was able to show me the proper incantation to use. So I'm passing that along to you. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to show. And, and just to show how this all works, let's go ahead and run this as a... Uh, as a web service. So we're going to start up the folder application, which is where the folder controller runs. That's going to go ahead and start up as a, uh, as a microservice. I guess I better cancel my previous run before I try to do that. So this should go ahead and start everything up. And then once that's up and running, then we can switch over and have the client program, which I'll show you in more detail, go ahead and make a bunch of requests to 
get the contents that are being served by the microservice. And as you can see here, we've got both local and remote calls. They all do the same thing because it's all the same data, but it's demonstrating we can mix and match between local com computations and remote ones, and it all works out of the box. Now, there's also some other calls here I want to focus on called the remote tests. And you can see here that these are basically calls that are made from the client to specific methods defined in the folder controller. And these are kind of cool, and we'll take a look at them. So you can see that we do a count of durant entries, which is going to come back to us from a client point of view as a completable future, which is pretty cool. We're also going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to get a mono back. And then we're also going to go ahead and uh, count the number of documents that contain the word completable future, as well as count the number of times completable future occurs. And the way we count the number of documents is actually going to be using a stream. So this is going to illustrate how you can do some real cool adaptations to convert project reactor data types like Flux and Mono into their corresponding Java, modern Java equivalents, things like stream and completable future. So that's the big picture view. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the code to see how all this works. So if we go over to the main program and we go down a bit, we're going to find there's something here called run remote tests. And these tests are all making method calls that are served by the folder application microservice and its folder controller, which is the way in which the mapping takes place between the get requests made from the client and the actual implementations of those requests by the microservice. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Here's one where we say folder tests proxy count entries async. And you'll notice what we get back from this thing is a completable future. So this demonstrates that you can use these modern Java features like completable futures, and then later we can also use streams quite interchangeably when you use Webflux and Project Reactor. And that's really cool. So let's take a look at how this works. So under the hood, we're going to go ahead and invoke this proxy method called count entries async, which is going to go ahead and make a get request to the microservice for the scount URI. And if we go to scount URI, you'll see that this just says slash folders slash works slash underscore count. And that's what's going to be served. That's what's going to be called back on the, on the uh, microservice. Then we go ahead and make the request, we get back the response, and then we convert this body, which is gonna come back as a JSON encoded long, into a mono, so now we've got a mono to a long, and then we go ahead and we say to future, and that's the Project Reactor way of converting this back to a completable future. So if you actually take a look at the code that, that calls this stuff back over here, you can see that we get this back as a completable future, which we can then join with. We could do other things with it as well, of course, but I just made this simple. Uh, we could also do the same thing with the mono variant of this thing, which is pretty much identical to the other one, except that we don't convert it to a completable future at the end. We just convert it back to a mono. And you can see then we just say, you know, count m for count mono dot block. So count m dot block is sort of equivalent to count f dot join. They both wait until the future has been computed. Let's take a look at a couple of other interesting things here. So another fun example is this one called get documents with word matches. So get documents with word matches, as you can see here, returns a stream. And the way this works is we're going to go ahead and send a request over to the server called the get documents URI request. And if we take a look there, you can see this is just going to call the slash folders slash works slash get documents uh, URI. And that will then be sent over to the server, the microservice, as a get request. And what comes back here is a body to, or what comes back is a durant, which contains all the directory documents in that folder that happen to match a certain search word, whatever you want to search. So it's kind of like using grep minus L or egrep minus L, where it gives you back the documents that match. And so what we do here is we convert that durant to a flux, because that's what it is, that's what it was sent as, and then we convert the flux to a stream. And so if we're so inclined, we can then treat this as a stream, and we could do other things with it. We could go ahead and make it parallel, we could go ahead and do the count, we can do other operations and treat it just as a good old Java, modern Java, Java 8 style stream if we want to. 
I want to follow this a little bit further, though, and, and look at the implementation of this part. So if you go over to Folder Controller, and we peek here into Get Documents, this is the microservice side of the equation, you can see that it takes in the, the root dir and some other parameters, and it calls this perform get documents method. And perform get documents goes ahead and creates a mono to the in-memory data structure that corresponds to reading the contents of the recursive folder from disk into memory. So that's the called root folder M for root folder mono. And then we take that root folder mono, what we call the get documents method. And this is a fun little method here too. This goes ahead and we'll wait until we've got the directory contents in memory. So the root folder M has now been ready to go. It's triggered. And then we say root folder, which is going to be this durant. Go ahead and convert that into a stream, a flux stream of durant entries, which could be a combination of documents and subfolders. And then we're going to go ahead and filter out everything that's not a document, number one. And then we're going to filter out everything that doesn't contain the search word. So this filter operation is going to only let through documents that contain the search word. So we're going to end up essentially with a stream of documents that match those properties. We then collect those documents into a list. So now I have a mono to a list of durants. And then we're going to go ahead and use flat map iterable, which will take that mono to a list of durants and convert it into a flux of durants. And that's what we're ultimately going to pass back here as the parameter. Uh, let me just show you word in document real quick, because that's a fun little method that shows off some cool project reactor features. We're going to go ahead and take the document and we're going to split it up into words. So now we have a flux stream of words. And then we're going to go ahead and pick the first one, any of them that happen to match the search word that we're looking for. So if anything matches the search word, then we're going to get back a mono with the Boolean set to true. Otherwise, if there's nothing that matches, we get a mono with the Boolean set to false. So that's basically what we're doing here. And that's how we're filtering out things that don't match and only taking the ones that do. So this shows you a few new examples of Project Reactor features we really haven't talked about much up to this point. So as you can see, this comes back as a flux. That is, of course, sent across the network. It's a flux of durants that are, in fact, documents. And then that comes back over here so on the proxy side, and it comes back here as this essentially JSON, and then we use body to flux with the Durant class with all the cool Jackson encoding tags and attributes, uh, annotations we gave that we talked about earlier, and that converts it into a flux of Durants, which are documents, and then we go ahead and convert those things to a stream. So this is, this is really cool. It also shows off a few other things that I've been having a lot of fun with. So um, what I'm really trying to do is come up with some nice ways of structuring the code so that we separate out the parts that do the business logic, which in this particular case would be doing things like counting the number of entries or searching for things or creating root folders from the proxy code, the client proxy code and the server proxy code that actually do the marshalling and demarshalling or the encoding and decoding of native Java data types into JSON that can be sent across using web service commands and then in order to be able to retrieve the results coming back. So this separation of concerns is, is very powerful and allows you, if you set the right levels of adapters and proxies and so on in your source code, it really makes it much easier to write code that can be distributed and split up into different parts without having to litter that kind of knowledge all the way through your business logic itself. So the, the business logic remains largely unaware of these things, and then we write these little proxies and controllers that handle the conversions and the encoding and decoding back and forth. And the, the key point again here is that, that by knowing how to use the Jackson type information annotations, it's easy to have the system do all the low-level details to code and encode the various data types. So that's what I wanted to talk with you about today. I hope you found this useful. I've been having probably way too much fun learning about uh, WebFlux and seeing how it integrates with Project Reactor. In, in my experience thus far, it's, it's really, really simple to use. There are some mysterious features as you get into the more advanced 
relationships between objects and inheritance and so on like we talked about today. But by and large, it makes it easy to figure out what's going on and uh, quite, quite a lot of fun to play with. So thanks, you guys, very much for watching. Please uh, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. And you can also follow me on Twitter. I have a Twitter account now where I post upcoming uh, announcements about various webinars. So thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.